You have to get over this. Stop wallowing. He's gone, and he's never coming back, and you have to let him go. Ugh. You're still not over it. Can you imagine saying this to someone whose loved one just died? After my fiance, Sergio, died, after he heroically gave his life at the World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001, I heard these harsh words, sometimes from others, and a lot of times I said them to myself. I recently met a 33-year-old woman whose fiance had suddenly died three months before. I was also 33 when Sergio died. So it was very easy for us to connect and talk truthfully about our grief. And she told me how she was really, really struggling. That all she wanted to do was lay down and cry because the pain was so unrelenting and how exhausting it was trying to maintain a brave face for everyone else around her and how she couldn't focus at work and how lost and completely disconnected she felt from the woman she was, the happy and productive woman she was before he died. I told her that all of what she was feeling resonated so deeply with my own experience. And it comforted her and gave her a sense of relief even that she wasn't going crazy. I asked her to tell me a bit about her fiance and she lit up. She told me how sweet he was that he would, that he loved to wash her hair, which made her feel so beautiful and so loved. And I told her a little bit about Sergio and how funny we were together and how all of these years later, I can still hear his laughter, remembering all of the crazy stuff we used to do. I asked her about the support she was receiving and she told me how completely devastating it was when she decided to go home for Christmas and she drove hours and hours from Miami to, me, to New York, only to be greeted at the door by her mother, who said, don't come in here with that sadness. And her mother also told her that it was time to move on and that she should really start dating again. And this was just weeks after her fiance died. I told her about the time I was walking down the street and a neighbor who I barely knew grabbed me to tell me I know exactly how you feel. My husband was there too. And as she pulled me into her body, she con continued to say, well, he was my ex-husband and he got out. But I do know exactly how you feel because that waiting was so hard. And it was such a tragic thing that happened and you're so young and you know you really have to move on. <laughs> and then my friend told me that someone else in her family told her that if she cried too much, she was gonna get cataracts. And the craziest thing happened. I started to have these amazingly vivid visions of tackling each and every one of those people and pinning them down and with a nice open hand, smacking some sense into them. But I'm not a violent person. <laughs> <laughs> and in the words of Maya Angelou, when you know better, you do better. And I know that for the most part, these comments are well-intentioned because it's in our nature to want to fix things for people who are hurting, including ourselves. And I also know that these, this line of reasoning comes from either a blissful ignorance of not having someone close to us die and not really knowing the truth about grief, or the, an outdated approach to grief, which calls for us to be strong, pick ourselves back up, and carry on with life as usual. Whatever the reason, and however well-intentioned, I've learned firsthand that telling someone how to grieve is not helpful, and in fact, causes more harm than good. It puts horrible, horrible pressure on the person for making them feel as if there's something wrong with them for feeling whatever it is that they need to feel in order to get through it. So I'm here today 
to share a bit of wisdom that I've learned in the last 15 years about grief with the hopes that I can take away some of that pressure on anyone who is struggling with the loss of someone they love. And I also hope to shed a little light for those who are wanting to know how to, su how to support someone they love who is grieving. The first thing is that grief is not something that occurs in five stages, which flow neatly on a linear timeline that is over in one year. Uh, too many of us have been duped into believing that once we go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, and that usually takes about a year, that grief is going to be over, the dark days at least. Well, it's false. The actual process and timeline for grief is unique to the individual because we are all wired differently and we all have different situations and circumstances that will impact our ability to move forward after devastating loss. Many of us who are struggling with grief relate better to an ocean metaphor. Here we are on this beautiful beach and we're relaxing on a beautiful lounge chair and life is beautiful and we're drinking our delicious coconut water and we're laying back and the sun is shining on our face and all of a sudden a tidal wave just slams down on us and it crushes our heart and then we're violently yanked into an unforgiving ocean and it's dark and you can't breathe because your heart is so crushed and you can't get air and you're just trying to keep your head above water and you can't eat or sleep when you're being thrown around like that. And when you don't breathe well or eat well or sleep well, you can't function well. And when you can't function well, everything becomes difficult to do. Thankfully though, we can put on a life jacket and fasten it with hope and the inspiration of those who have crossed those oceans before us and the support of our family and our friends a good grief counselor, and a community of others who are facing similar loss. However it is that we choose to stay afloat, it is up to us to navigate those rough seas, to discover new joy, to regain our self-confidence and our sense of purpose, and to courageously dive into that ocean again and again becoming more resilient along the way. And with time, we can find our way back toward calmer waters and a better, more empathetic version of ourselves. Grief, much like the ocean, never ends. It ebbs and it flows. It shifts and it changes and we'll never know when we're gonna get hit with another wave. And with each wave, I can't stress this enough, it's, it's crucial that we gotta feel it to heal it. The work of grief, and it is extremely hard work, involves leaning into that pain and turning over every uncomfortable emotion and having them validated until we reach some sense of resolution. Grief needs to be shared not judged, and words such as, you must miss him, I'm here for you, this must be so hard, you will get through this, are enough to help support a person who is grieving. If we give ourselves and others the space to grieve in whatever way they need to, we need to, without judgment. We are not only honoring the eternal love that binds us with those who have died, we are also helping in the process of bringing meaning to their lives and our continued existence without them. Now, two of the things that I really struggled with a lot during the early years of my grief journey. Um, the first was this whole idea that we have to move on. Well, we don't move on, we move forward. Grief is not, losing someone is not like losing a job or, an exper or experiencing a failure that we move on from. Instead, we learn to live with the pain of our loss and we move forward when we are ready 
carrying the love, inspiration of our loved ones, and memories with us. The other thing that I had a really, really hard time with was this whole notion of letting go. You have to let him go. <sighs> what I've learned is that the only things that we have to let go of are our expectations of the future we were planning on having with our loved ones. We have to let go of our fear, our guilt, our shame, and any other negative self-talk which, which can get in the way of our healing. We do not have to let go of our memories or of our love or of the idea we, we can no longer create new memories with our loved ones. As long as we speak their names and share their stories, we get to create new memories with our loved ones. We don't have to let go in order, let go of that love in order to bring new love and joy in. We get to keep that love forever and we can add to that love, knowing that joy and sorrow can coexist. I'm living proof of that. I am grateful to say that I've been living happily now for almost 11 years with my other loves of my life, my wonderful husband Ray and our two daughters. I wanna share this quote with you. Um, and whoever wrote it really deserves a standing ovation. Grief is the last act of love we can give to those we loved. Where there is deep grief, there was great love. Grief is a sacred rite of passage and should be respected as such. It is a hero's journey filled with deep, dark sorrow, messy twists and turns, courageous battles, love, joy, and unexpected surprises. Through the darkness of grief, we see the light of love, which transcends death. And with all of the pain that grief brings, it can also bring us gratitude for the gift of time we had with our loved ones, the amount of which will always be too short, and for the pain which we would endure again and again, because that pain is the result of loving someone so much that it hurts to let their physical presence go. When we really take in this profound truth that grief is an act of love, it is that much easier to be gentler with ourselves and others who are going through it. And I wanna leave you with this last thought. This is the biggest lesson that I learned in grief. Grief is a big kick in the ass reminder that no one gets out alive. Um, no one gets out alive. We are not guaranteed tomorrow or the next minute for that matter. So I want you to ask yourselves, are you living a life filled with meaningful connections and are you being the best person you can be for yourself, for the people you love, for that person who needs a helping hand, for our world? The truth is that every one of you in this room right, right now is going to inevitably be the person that someone will grieve over. So I want you to ask yourself, what are you doing now to inspire and strengthen those you love to keep living without you when you're gone? How do you wanna be remembered? And how will you want your loved ones to be treated when they are grieving over you? If you keep the answer to this question, in mind, then maybe, just maybe, we'll never have such a harsh response to grief again. Thank you.